Is it live? Is it live? There we go. Hey everyone, good to see you this afternoon. I figured I'd try an afternoon on a Sunday. Hopefully some of you are getting into your bathroom remodeling projects. So I understand if you can't get on the live stream this afternoon, but I've been really working on a lot of videos lately and I'm super excited to see how this channel is growing. So first off, thanks so much for all the new subscribers. Absolutely tremendous to see the uptick. And hey, on the way in here, if you could give me a like on this video, helps out that algorithm, gets things more pushed out there. And I tell you what, the conversations that we're having here on this channel, I think is really beneficial to a lot of people. Uh, just definitely getting people motivated to, to remodel their own bathrooms and showing them techniques and better ways. So thanks for all the contractors on this uh, platform as well, sharing their advice, sharing their ways of doing things. That's really exciting. Uh, you know, we, as a team, as a, as a support system, we can all get things done better, more efficiently. And that's what this channel is all about. It's about sharing ideas. Uh, you know, primarily, if you don't know me, my name is Steve. I'm a, I've been a contractor here in the Pittsburgh area for 22 years now. I started when I was really young, 21 years old. I started my own business, and I just started uh, doing construction remodeling projects. I actually started out doing power washing uh, homes, like doing decks, power washing decks, doing things like that. And then I just eventually moved into roofing and um and then i just started buying homes and and fixing up my own places and that's really where i got my education but the last 14 years i've been doing nothing but bathroom remodeling one after another so i've kind of honed things down to a certain pattern and i tell you what you know these last couple years i think i've learned more in the last couple years than i did in the first you know 10 years that i started doing the bathroom remodeling, and it just has the it is the ease of access of getting to knowledge um, this YouTube, all the social media platforms, all the contractors out there sharing the way they do things really has made a tremendous difference with the education and the ability for everybody to to learn and, you know, kind of copy off each other or get get, you know, see methods on how to do things and make it more effectively. So I think I'm a, uh, that I, I'm in a good position to uh, kind of pull people together and do this just because of the amount of time I've been out here doing this and making YouTube videos. So today is a little bit of a mismatch. You might be wondering like, what in the world you're talking about tile tools and insulation? Well, I didn't think that the tile tools were gonna take all that long. I wanted to, you know, typically my most of my live streams are about an hour. Uh, and, but I, you know, I really do appreciate the feedback. So I'm really looking for, um, you know, if you guys have any questions about anything, whatever you're doing in your own project, I'm, I'm very curious to see uh, where you're at with things and, and if you have, you know, where your troubles and parts are. I did a poll the other day asking about what the, the you know, what, what's the least favorite part of a project or the most, you know, I guess anxiety provoking pro part of the project that people don't want to get into. So I asked whether it was plumbing, electrical, tiling, drywall and painting. And I was surprised. Tiling was the big issue. Tiling was uh, the issue that most people were kind of dreading getting into. And, you know, I could kind of understand that to a certain extent. But I think some of these tools that I'm going to go through will really help and make it a lot easier. Um, and, uh, you know, and if you get into my course, you know, I really outlay things a lot uh, more clearly, a lot more in, in a manner that... Uh, you know, you can kind of hone down and, and figure out the materials that are going to work best. I mean, when it comes to tiling, you know, thin sets are really, really important. Get, you know, especially if you're a beginner or if you're somebody who doesn't do tile all the time, you want to get some kind of a thin set that's actually going to last a long time in the bucket. Because uh, the worst thing is, is getting into it and then an hour later, all your thin sets are ruined and you got to mix it again. It's just kind of really frustrating. So if you get a good thin set, you know, like Artex or something like that, that's going to make it a lot easier for you. But Tonight or today, uh, we're going to be uh, first discussing about insulation of bathrooms. I wanted to throw this into my course because I think it's an important thing to think about. Uh, you know, if you've listened to any of my other uh, online presentations, I'm always trying to advise people to uh, gut their bathrooms. If you're going to do a remodel, if you're going to do a real remodel, if you're going to put in a new bathtub, you're going to do a new tub surround, you want a new vanity and you want a new toilet, that is the incomplete, you know, the whole thing. So I would really recommend spending the extra time taking down that plaster, taking down that existing drywall, and then making sure that your electrical and plumbing and everything is in good shape before you go putting thousands of dollars on top of that. Uh, and so once you remove everything, then you'll be able to see the condition of the electrical and plumbing. 
but that's what I wanted to add into my course was about insulation. I think at that point, why are you leaving that old nasty insulation that's really not doing anything most of the time? You know, I mean, if you had a home that was 50, 60 years old, you know, that stuff is probably molded. Um, it's not very thick. It probably was, it, it could have been just scrunched in there really badly and not even working. So I'm going to give you a recommendation on the insulation that I like to use. And, um, that makes a big difference. So, um, Hey Dave, good to see you. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming here today. So, uh, just to let you know, <clears throat> you know, you could be able to access all these live streams on my channel. So if you haven't been to my channel, which I'm assuming you are since you're, you're here today, um, you know, subscribe to my channel, hit that little notification bell. That'll give you indication of when I do go live. Um, because my plan is to do live uh, streams every week and, uh, you know, try to just communicate with you, let you, you know, um, and, and, get, and really try to engage with the people that are really trying to be serious about getting bathroom remodeling done. Uh, and it really, all that feedback helps me because I, I want to create videos that are answering people's questions. And if I can have them on here, um, you know, all the better. So, it, you know, please give me feedback and always, it's just going to make my channel better. But if you go in the playlists on my channel, you'll be able to find, uh, basically all the live stream videos right now. Um, I have, uh, the bathroom remodeling online course, uh, a whole slew of live videos that go over the entire course, a lot of great information there. Um, but I also have the live stream full playlist here, which th that will be in here once uh, this is complete. So right now it's live. So be sure to check that out on my YouTube channel. Use those resources to get back to this. Um, and then remember, you know, if you're on a phone and you're watching this later, you can always speed this up. Go 2x, you know, what? why, uh, you know, take a long time to, to get to the point of where I'm going. You could fast forward this whole beginning and get right into the meat of the, the topic. So first thing, let's get into uh, my course. So if you don't know about it, it's at bathroomremodeling.teachable.com. And actually, I'm really working on my new site here as well, bathroomremodeling.teachable.com, teacher.com. Boy, I can't even pronounce it bathroomremodelingteacher.com and under my learn page. So I'm really trying to build this out. Right now, I, I mean, under the plan page, I just have a bunch of, a couple of checklists for you, but I'm gonna really build this out. I wanna, I wanna have some um, basically specs on bathrooms, some ideas on, or basically standards and code requirements for certain things in the bathroom. Because if you're remodeling a bathroom, you might, might wanna adjust what you have in your layout you know, and it's really important to kind of go by the, uh, you know, the kitchen and bath national council, um, and, and other folks, you know, uh, built plumbing code and electrical code to go over things. So I really want to build out this plan page. It's just going to take a little bit of time, but under my learn page, this is where you can get into, into my course. So you can learn more. It just kind of gives you a synopsis of what uh, the entire course is now the actual course is on teachable.com. It's a platform. I build it out on very user friendly. So let's just get in here and I want to show you what I updated on here. So if, if you, if you've enrolled, you're going to see which ones you bought right now. I have a tub and shower course, uh, that basically is going through the entire process from demo to installing, you know, your last final accessories and things. And I also have a custom glass enclosure. So if you're doing a custom glass enclosure or if you're doing a custom shower, I should say, the glass enclosure is always a very um, painful point when you're going out and getting those quotes. You, it's not surprising to hear, you know, on like a four foot by four foot shower, you know, you'd be looking at between three to $4,000 having that installed by a glass and uh, company. So I created this so that, you know, you can measure order and confidently install your own glass enclosure. And it's literally going to save you half that amount of money. Um, most glass enclosures are usually between 1200 and $1,700 in material. So you're definitely cutting that price down in half. And if you're already doing tile work, you're already being precise. You're already honed those skills to be able to, you know, to really kind of pay attention to detail. And that's really all as it takes when, you know, the more, the most important part of the glass enclosure deal is measuring it correctly, making sure that you're not going to be off. So I have a lot of great tips in there. We're probably going to do some live streams on that here in the future. So that you can see what's in that course and see if it's the right fit for you. 
but the tub and shower course, I just, I completed it. I'm very, uh, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to some more feedback from people, but uh, it really is, it encapsulates the entire process from start to finish, from installing that tub, the, the tub and shower faucet, waterproofing, huge step of the, the project. I uh, get into real great detail on that. Um, and really like I'm, I basically highlight just specific products that I use in this specific bathroom, but most of them are just all the, basically the products that I find the easiest to install and that they're decent quality, you know, um, they're going to withstand the, the, the test of time. So everything I'm recommending here has just been over the years of experience. So you can feel confident in that when I'm recommending is stuff that I actually use. I'm not. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm not planning to be sponsored by anybody. You know, it'd be great if some company sent me out some products to try, but uh, I have no affiliation with any of these companies. This is just literally stuff that, you know, I, over the years, I've found to be the best way to about doing things. Um, I get into hanging drywall and finishing. Like I said, I really recommend you tear it, taking everything down in a bathroom so you can see the electrical and plumbing. You know, most bathrooms are six to seven sheets of drywall. It's really not that bad. Definitely isn't a cost problem. I mean, the cost might be, uh, you know, 200 bucks for all the drywall you need in a normal bathroom. But uh, so, but there's a lot, you know, there's techniques you got to learn here and I, and I go through it. So in this course, this is basically a one man type of job. That's I, I'm a one man crew. That's the way I've been working for years. I just basically do everything myself. So the teachings I have in here are basically one man, you know, the strategies of doing it by yourself. Um, so towel setting, epoxy grouting, one of my favorite grouts. I have a bunch of new videos coming out on epoxy grout as well. I really think if you're doing white grout, that is probably the best type of grout to use. It's going to be, you'll be able to always get it back to that white consistency or look. Um, you know, white is a very sensitive color. Uh, if you had an existing shower that's yellowed, you know, I can understand uh, your trepidation of using white, but the epoxy is really going to do the, um, a great job on that. So my curriculum, now this is just goes day by day. I did this in seven days in real time. Uh, I had my wife was filming me and we basically remodeled uh, a five by eight standard bathroom. So just looking at, you know, basically a, a standard size bathroom with a tub toilet and a 30 inch vanity so nothing real complicated we'll get into uh, another live stream at some point on this but as you can see i did that in the summer so you know I, it was really important for me to do this in real time i mean not that i i always kind of planned for seven to eight days to do a standard bathroom but i really wanted to you know in order for me to express what i'm doing here i needed to do it in that amount of time so i could feel confident with what i'm saying um you know, and, and doing all the filming, it actually takes up a lot of time filming things. So, you know, in, in reality, I could have done it a lot quicker. It's just, uh, you know, the, the time restraints of filming. And then when my wife had to leave, it's just, there was a lot going on. So, but basically the order of operation is the way I've been doing it for about a decade now. And I think it really uh, turns out well because the bathroom remodeling revolves around timing on a lot of things. You know, I mean, it, it takes time for... Uh, you, you know, your, um, all your different things to, to set up, you know, the, the thin set needs to dry before you can grout, you need to be painting, you need to have the drywall mud. So there's an order of operation that you need to do if you want to get it done efficiently. So, and that's what I really highlight in this course. But just to give you a quick, quick reference of what a standard bathroom would probably cost you from a contractor. Now I'm in Pittsburgh, so you have to take this with a grain of salt in your standards of living or, or the areas that you live in and the cost of living to be there. But typically it's about twelve to $15,000 to do a standard bathroom, tile, you know, a tile sub, tub surround, tiled floor, and then just decent materials, nothing over the top crazy. We're not doing any heated tile bars or we're not even doing any heated flooring. Um, this is just like an American standard toilet, a standard vanity that would be around 600 bucks. Um, so nothing too extremely expensive. Uh, in this bathroom, it was $4,900 on for all the materials. And so, you know, it was around 12, it was about 13,000, honestly, by the time it was done, because I did have a, a couple things that I needed to charge the client for, which was, I, I added a GFI or the, the outlet that was in the bathroom was not dedicated, it was connected to the light fixture. So as soon as you turn off the switch, it turned off the GFI. So I had to run a dedicated line for that. And then uh, a couple other plumbing things that needed to be addressed. So 
we're right in that ballpark between the 12 and 15,000, but you can expect easily to save yourself seven grand um, by doing this yourself. Now, ultimately, that's some of the things we're going to get into today about the tile tools. You know, you can spend a lot of money on tools when you're doing a bathroom. So um, I kind of just wanted to give some of the must have ones that I think are important, and we'll go through each one here in a little bit later. But I wanted to go over what I've changed on the course since that we last had a live stream. And one would be just having this checklist uh, that will complement the course. So it's basically, uh, I built these on Checkly. Uh, so that's just, I'll just show you real quick. Well, actually, let me show you the checklist first. So the checklist is basically 99 steps. I have it broken down basically day by day, just like I have the... Um, the actual course so it kind of goes hand in hand and what's great about this is that you're going to be able to uh, use this uh, on your phone and any device the most important thing though is when you click on that checkly uh, list you got to press run process this is going to create its own url specifically for you when you do it so you'll see this little red button that says live process you want to copy this and put this somewhere that you can come back to so like I have my checklist here, so I just copy it, I put them here, and then when I click back on that URL, I can get back to this. But if you don't do that, nothing that you put on here is gonna save. You, you have to um, press that run process first. So that's what my explanation is on, on the course as well. But basically it goes through every step of each day, and then along with the helpful tips of different things that you might need for the project or you should probably think about having. Because that's one thing I, I noticed, people, have a hard time getting things accomplished when they have to run out to Home Depot or Lowe's every single day. It, ta it takes up a big amount of time. You probably need a coffee on the way out there. So, you know, you're spending hours of time going out and getting simple things like this. All of this could be done ahead of time, ordered ahead of time. So I really go into, uh, you know, basically the checklist of, oh, there we go. I got to go back, go back. So you can easily just click on these, make sure that you have the now, I mean, plumbing and different things like that, now that's a really tough thing to, to know exactly what you're gonna need, but I can guarantee you're probably gonna, you know, first day, you're gonna want some of these shark bite caps. You wanna put them on your copper. You, you remove that vanity, you remove those existing valves, you put these on so you can get water back in the home. If you're working for a client, you know, you know they're anxious about getting their water back on their home. So having these materials, these core materials, ahead of time is really going to prepare you now me as a contractor i have a trailer full of all this stuff so i i you know but this is still a great reference i'm going to be using this uh you know honestly in some ways this was a selfishly done project because it's going to make me faster and better and makes you know i don't have to constantly think about what i'm doing i could just go through my checklist and uh, hey if you're a contractor and you find something in here say steve you know you need to add something on there please please email me please contact me um, I, I am all about suggestions. I've learned so much more from other people criticizing or correcting me on some of my methods. So bathroom remodeling requires a lot of skills. Okay. So, you know, you're not going to be a hundred percent at everything, but you can certainly improve on every one in every bathroom. That's my intention is to improve. But I also have in here in this checklist, you know, my favorite grouts. Um, I have suggestions on tubs that I've really liked over the years. Uh, Sal de Blasi actually, uh, we, we ended up putting something in here. He has a PDF link for, um, you know, floor tiling. And then obviously I have his channel here. You could buy Sal coffee. Uh, he, he's a tremendous resource. But, uh, you know, really there's just a lot of great things in this checklist. So check it out. It's free. I'm not charging anything for it. It just complements the course very well. So that's basically what I have uh, at the beginning of this. And then we'll get into the must have tools, but I have a checklist for that as well. All right, so going down to where I added this insulation thing, let's go over the insulation first because, you know, I, I was thinking about it, um, you know, and I put that in on day one because I want you to remember or think about making sure you have that insulation. Because when you tear the whole bathroom apart, you want to get that vent fan in on the first day. And if, you, if the insulation is bad, you want to replace that and put some new insulation in. So, uh, but looking at the insulation here, let's go through this video. It's just a quick video, but I really highly recommend this type of uh, insulation because it really, um, yeah, it's just so much better. It's, it's, it has a higher R value. We'll get into it here in a second. But hey, CJ, good to see you. Um, 
I'm glad to see you here today. So let's, uh, all right, let's go through it here. Let's play this little clip and then we'll get in a little bit more detail about it. If you're remodeling a bathroom and you have gutted the entire space and took everything down to the studs, I highly recommend you get rid of this crappy insulation that might have been installed in your home. This paper-faced old insulation, for one, doesn't have a very good R value, and most of the time it's installed incorrectly where it's all bunched in. And if it's all bunched, it's not getting the proper R value. Plus, there's not too many situations where I've seen paper-faced insulation that doesn't have some form of mold growing on it. So I highly recommend that you replace that with a much better insulation. So my recommendation is to use mineral wool. Now this is an insulation that has quite a few different benefits compared to the traditional insulations, but the primary one is that it's going to have a higher R value than your traditional pink insulation. Uh, in a 2x4 wall, you'll be able to get an R15 versus an R13. But the other reason I really like about it is that it's really easy to install um, and then it doesn't have the paper face, so you're going to eliminate that molding issue on the paper. Uh, now, the other thing about it is, is that if it gets wet, it's not the end of the world. It's, uh, it'll dry out. It's not going to be a problem uh, with uh, additional mold there. It's also very fire resistant. And then as far as sound quality goes, I have to say it's probably the best. So I would recommend using this in your plumbing wall. Um, if you're in a master bathroom, it keeps the sound from uh, escaping outside of that room. Just use one of these knives. These knives are really great for cutting it. It's a long, um, basically, insulation knife. It makes it real easy to cut this down. Because what you want to do is avoid scrunching the insulation into any cavity. It needs to be kind of loosely fit, so cutting it with a knife makes it a lot easier and um, puts everything into place properly. Okay, so that was it. I just, that's, you know, this insulation, there isn't too many bathrooms that I do that that existing crappy insulation that, uh, you know, that you tear out isn't molded in some fashion or just kind of shoved in there. And it really isn't doing a whole heck of a lot. I'd be really curious by somebody who actually tests things of what this kind of old crappy, you know, this was a home that was built in the 1970s. Um, but if that was even past like R10, I'd be surprised. I would be really, really surprised. So, um, you know, but most of the time, most of the time this paper has some kind of form of mold on it in some aspect, especially if they put a vapor barrier on the inside of the room. I see that a lot as well, using that plastic vapor barrier over top of the insulation on side of bathroom. I, um, there's a lot of debate about that, uh, and it really depends on, you know, how watertight the outside of your home was. Like new construction built homes, everything's being watertight from the outside, air sealed and watertight from the outside. So there's really no reason for a vapor barrier on the inside of your uh, house anymore and you know most of the time if you did do it like a, a plastic vapor barrier on the inside of your bathroom you're going to create a trap of moisture in between the you know the exterior the interior and that's where i always see a lot of uh, molding on this paper face it usually uh you know there's usually some signs of mold somewhere but that you know that's a concern but it's not really the biggest one it's just the fact that it's actually not really doing anything so that's why i recommend just replacing that it might cost you you know maybe 150 bucks depending on the size of your bathroom uh to to replace but john's manfield had a great course here but first i want to mention cj thanks for buying the course man i'm really i'm really uh you know happy that that that's helped you out any of these little tips now my price did go up he just said it was 25 bucks i, I am going to pass that 25 dollar value on to any people that were on my old platform that i no longer have access to because i feel bad that i haven't been able to communicate with them so if you were a bathroom repair tutor member i'd be more than happy to give you a discount code send it over to you but uh right now it, it's it's 50 bucks now so i mean i still think 
I mean, you get into this course, I think you will definitely get uh, an easy $50 worth of value out of that. Whether, you know, <laughs> the Windex trick, man, I tell you what, it's kind of funny. I, I didn't know for years until I got my certification with the CTF um, tile certification. Uh, and, you know, they, we were demonstrating, we were installing tile. You have to do this little mock-up and they test you and that, that you, you either pass or fail. And they, you know, the, and the TCNA actually requires all your joints or they recommend all of your corner joints in a shower to be a quarter inch wide, which I think is ridiculous. That's a little too much. Maybe in a commercial application, it makes total sense and you want to make sure you maintain that. But on a, on a residential home, who wants to see quarter inch um, grout joints anywhere uh, or corner joints for that matter? But, you know, as part of the demonstration, I was like, I don't know how to make this look good. Like a quarter inch caulking joint is going to look awful. And so I, I ended up, you know, I obviously passed the test, but my caulking looked terrible. It really did. And then one of the instructors told me, hey, just use a little bit of, you can even use soapy water, use some Windex, just spray down that joint and it'll keep it from smearing all over the, the tile. I mean, it was it was tremendous. So I've been using it ever since. And then now you can see on social media, everybody doing it. So, you know, again, like this, this whole sharing of knowledge has really made a difference for everybody. Um, so back to the installation, um, you know, John's Mansfield, uh, that's what we were, uh, was that John's Mansfield, the mineral wool? They do have mineral wool. I, I, maybe that's the uh, Owens Corning. You know what? Let me just see. So anyways, John's Mansfield, I guess that is their own installation. I'm sorry. But they had a great article and I have the link in the description if you're curious to see this. But it kind of just referenced between mineral wool and fiberglass insulation. And the biggest thing with the mineral wool, you're going to get two more, you know, you're going to get another R value of R15 versus 13 in a regular two by four wall. But as, as mentioned, it, you know, it's water resistant. It doesn't, um, you know, if water got to, it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, and it's pretty much fire resistant. So it's really, um, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, it says not, uh, fiberglass is non-combustible too, but, uh, the ratings are way, way lower on the mineral wool. So, but this article was really great. I think it was a really well-written short tutorial on, on the differences, uh, and you know, I'm definitely sold on it. I like it a lot. It, it's easy to, it's easier to install than regular fiberglass insulation and just the thickness of it, uh, you know, kind of prevents you from kind of squishing that together. You can still do that pretty easy with the paper faced stuff. And, uh, you know, when you're, when you're installing paper faced, um, insulation, it, it can be a little bit troublesome. So I definitely find it a lot easier to install, uh, the, uh, the mineral wool and just the fact that you know for in a bathroom where if it did get wet it's not going to be the end of the world i mean you get this stuff wet it's going to start molding so i think that peace of mind right there is great but please wear a respirator you know each one part of my courses i always kind of highlight the main key points because i don't see it necessary to keep watching the video over again it takes up time and you're just better off just to kind of reference things within uh my outline just to kind of grasp over it but you know insulation's fairly simple i'm not you know it's very easy stuff but definitely wear a respirator this stuff is nasty i mean who knows what some of this older stuff had probably has asbestos in it everything had asbestos in it before 1970 or 1980 for that matter so i would uh, definitely take caution when you're removing that stuff but uh there's two different kinds that i reference here that are probably the most popular owens corning so you make just be sure that when you're looking at this stuff, you're paying attention to whether you have 16 inches on center studs or 24 inch. Um, but most of them, um, you just have to pay attention to the square footage. Uh, I know this uh, thermofiber, um, it, it's like 30 square feet. So it doesn't really take, it doesn't really go too far. So pay attention to how many square feet you're actually using. But I would use that um, definitely on your exterior walls. But also, you know, it's nice to have it on your shower plumbing wall as well so that you can you know reduce the sound outside of the bathroom but the other another popular kind is the uh, rock wool and again paying attention to it so if you did the if you had two by six walls which most new homes are constructed now you'll get an r23 out of it which is tremendous but this is twice as much insulation in, in most of the rock wool so you get about 60 square feet most bathroom that's all i have to do is buy one of these and then i buy the the uh, ceiling insulation but I wanted to make sure that, you know, when you're going through my course to think about this, because you might 
want to replace your insulation and it usually only takes 20 minutes to install the installations but it takes an hour to run around and go get it so being a uh, being planning ahead and make sure you have everything would make it you know i would definitely have this on day one i think it's a uh, would be very helpful to have on day one um, but here here's a demonstration that i had gone to uh coverings man i don't remember when this was 2017 maybe and uh so they had uh, a little demonstration of how water uh, is running on it and it's not a, not that big of a deal and then showing the fire resistance of it as well uh, but one of these insulation knives huge huge help um, only 23 bucks but boy that makes it much faster installation installation of the insulation so um, but ceiling insulation they do make the rock wool in it um, but it's just usually not readily available it's it, you pretty much would have to order that in so typically on my bathrooms I end up just using the standard paper face stuff um but know that a lot of new codes these days they're one r49 for the ceiling so you almost have to double layer stuff to be able to achieve that um, but if you're in an older home most likely your entire home doesn't have that kind of r value so you know i just usually just get a roll of this or a, a package of this r30 and that's enough for you know a normal bathroom ceiling height but again having that ahead of time definitely worth it you're most like i mean you can pretty much count on having to replace it, especially if your bathroom hasn't been renovated in you know 30 years. You're, you're probably just better off to replace it all together. Um, and then uh, you know if you're going to do that paper face, you just want to have a, a stapler on hand for that. So that's what I just wanted to quickly reference in my course. But as you can see on my my left hand side here, you know it's everything's organized day by day. And then when you get into each part of this um, course. You know, it, it goes through a highlighted area down below. This is about the niches and paying attention to the framing. You don't want to just be cutting into a, a wall and, and, and having it being a load bearing wall. Um, so, but uh, yeah, so check out the course. Uh, definitely still enroll. I got a little bit over a hundred people now, I think. And uh, it's been tremendous. So um, again, I'm always looking for, looking for that feedback. Now, what happened to me? Oh, I put myself off the corner here. Okay. All right. So let's go back to uh, the must have tools. And all right. So, all right. So the must have tools. So that was the better insulation. Again, you can get this free checklist. I have uh, the checklist in the description below in this video. So, you know, if anything, just use the checklist. You, you'll, you'll get a lot of information out of that just on its own. Um, and then you can decide if you're really serious about doing a bathroom, get into that course. Um, but let's go over uh, some of these towel tools. I thought this would be a good topic to talk about and uh, discuss, you know, what, what might be some of the best tools. Um, basically what I just use on a daily basis when I'm doing tile work. So let me shrink myself down here. We'll get down to the edge here. Well, I guess I don't really have to shrink myself. I just stay there. Um, there's really no sound on this. It's just the, the, the everything running. But we'll, uh, we'll probably pause for a minute and I'll discuss a little bit further. Okay, so a good grinder and a diamond blade. This is almost a must. If you're doing tiling work, you're going to need a grinder with a diamond wheel. Um, I really don't see any way out of it. I mean, obviously, if you had a wet saw, you could probably do most of everything with that. But when it comes to cuts like this around your shower valve, you're going to need it. And I definitely, definitely recommend um, uh, Montelit uh, Diamond Blades. This is a uh, STL blade. And one thing I want to mention, you can see the way that I'm actually cutting this. You can see that it's not straight up and down and trying to make a curved cut. That is a little bit harder. I mean, there's, you know, you obviously see online everybody doing these tricks where they just, you know, they just cut out the circle, no problem good for them great for them you know and i mean i could do it as well but it's just it is a little bit um it's not you know it, it's hard to be accurate that way um i like these blades because you can actually just grind down through uh the tile so as you can see all of these have it's diamonds all the way around here so this is basically used as like a grinder slash cutting wheel so you can kind of do both of them with it now it comes at a hefty price uh but this thing is gonna last a really long time. So, but as you can see, the way I run this, I'm basically just grinding my way through. And then this is where, 
you know, scribe cutting your first row of tile is really important. So when you get to my checklist, let me go to my checklist on this. Most must have tile tools. So this will be in the description as well. And this is just kind of going, you know, you can get the link to the YouTube video. So by just clicking on the plus symbols, go to the YouTube video and just watch this video if you haven't seen it. Um, but the core of this grinder, uh, you know, Milwaukee has been kind of my favorite. Uh, I've been using for many, many years. Only thing I would say about this is get one with this quick release. This makes it a lot easier to uh, put it on and off the blades. I think that's really helpful. I hate using those stupid tools that tension everything down. So this one comes with it. It is a hefty price. This is the, the tool only version. Is it? I'm pretty sure that's the tool only version. Bear tool, yeah, yeah. But the other reason that this is so expensive is because it's brushless. So, you know, there's the regular, uh, a lot of the stuff you buy at the box stores are, are not brushless. They're just, uh, you know, that's what the fuel line of Milwaukee is. Now, I don't know everything about Milwaukee, but I know the brushless uh, tools will outperform and outlast any of the existing other ones. So, um, and, and, you know, I've had two of my Milwaukee grinders like this and I've had them for well over well over five years now so I've done a lot of tile work with them and they're still they're still pretty working great now it is nice to have uh, the bigger batteries the nine amp batteries is that what this is oh, that's six and a half that's weird uh, they have nine amp yeah these nine amp batteries Waitley compatible with the Milwaukee they started making huh I didn't even realize they were making uh, batteries that fit in different drills that are off brand that's interesting huh because normally a 9 amp battery I'll have to look into that I'll have to try that out actually $65 is a tremendous deal for a 9 amp battery because a Milwaukee battery would be a fortune um, I think they're 189 bucks or something let's just look it up Milwaukee uh, 9 amp battery Okay, so this, boy, they're just selling this stuff all online. Uh, that's a 12 amp battery. Those are great. Definitely the 12 amps are better. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so this is made by Milwaukee. Let's see what the buying options were on this. Oh, come on, Amazon. You're not even going to have me a price on this. Well, let me just go into the main internet here. Uh, Milwaukee. There we go. That's more like it. 200 and even this one, $169. That's more like it. That's more what that, that's usually, that's a two pack. Anyways, I'm sorry. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll diverge. But anyways, uh, the 9 amp batteries are better for the grinders for sure. They definitely work out a lot better. Um, a lot more power and you'll be able to get a lot more time out of it. So um, that's what I would go with. I just had no idea they made off-brand um, things like that. That's pretty crazy. Uh, so back to, where's my list at here? Oh, it's corny. I don't even know what I did with it. Go back to my checklist list. Must have tools. I'm, I'm starting to make checklist lists on everything. I, I just love them. I, <laughs> I just think it's a great way to go through everything. Um, so yeah, so anyways, the grinders, uh, Milwaukee's uh, the one I'm kind of going with because I basically have all my other tools associated with it. That's usually what happens when you get into uh, buying some of these things, you end up just going with the same company so that you can use them for everything. But the other one, that's a great grinder, really tough to swallow the price, but the Hilti. Uh, Hilti is a great one as well, and they have their own version of the quick disconnect. I just think that's important for the grinder because it's such a big, you know, it's a big hassle constantly using that tool to add everything on. So if you can get the quick releases on it, that's great. But Hilti, definitely a, a good brand um, and, uh, I mean, that's what I plan on and trying to develop with my inventory is just going with the better, um, 
a manufacturers like that, the Hilti drills and, and their battery seem to last out, outlast a lot of uh, other companies. So then I have the um, diamond blades. I have a couple recommendations here. This would probably be my go-to blade if I just had to have one blade and I can only afford one. Uh, this is the one I would buy, this CGX um, made by Montelit. 55 bucks, but boy, this thing is great for porcelain, just about anything. It's a really, really good um, diamond blade. I've been very happy with it. I've been using it for you know, a good five or six years now. And then this is the STL blade. This is the one that I was using. Now, I don't know all my links are like Amazon. I just, you know, obviously if you buy stuff through my Amazon links, it definitely will help out. Um, but this uh, Montelit is a really great blade. Uh, and this is from Contractors Direct. So you can get that from there with a better price. Let's just see what their, you know, add the card to see their price. 118 bucks still. So yeah, that's pretty pricey, but you, you'll, you'll use this on a lot of different things. If you're doing more than one bathroom, I definitely, uh, you know, if you're doing more than one bathroom, I would recommend it. You, you can use that for a lot of different scenarios that the other ones aren't going to be able to be used. A couple of other specialty ones. I'm kind of a Montelit fan. Um, I got into that about, a, you know, eight, eight years ago and all their blades have really been tremendous. But this would be for like really small little projects. So like if you're cutting out like, you know, these are great for backsplashes, but the size of it's only like three and three A's. So you're able to get really small cuts with it or a nice definitely not necessary and I'm not making that like a must-have tool I'm just referencing that but then you can always just go with the standard you know this standard DeWalt blade now I would buy that CGX that Montelit over this this is 30 bucks I would spend the extra 25 bucks and get the better blade but I you know I used to use these forever and there's nothing wrong with them they can work great they're just a little tough sometimes on porcelain uh, depends on how hard your porcelain is but for the most part, these are still really great blades. You'll probably still be able to get them at Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. Um, but the continuous rim, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's in some ways, this would be better for marble and uh, softer stone. It kind of cuts a little bit more cleanly in some fashion. But, uh, you know, it's definitely a, a, an option that uh, I still recommend for that. All right, so let's go get our towel cutter here. So where did my video go? Oh, there it is. Montelit slide cutter here. Okay, so that was the um, Montelit blade. So let's look right here under towel cutters. Now, this is a real big dilemma here. Uh, and I had a hard time figuring out what might be best for people because it's such a different, it's such a different concept when you're thinking about just doing one or two bathrooms versus just doing this for a living, um, <clears throat> or doing this on a somewhat of a regular basis. I mean, if you're doing like maybe one bathroom a year, you're still probably going to want to invest in the tools that are going to make it really well. But I could see where it would be very difficult for somebody who might be just doing one or two bathrooms and spending $500 on a, a towel cutter. And you know you have to almost say to yourself, is it even worth buying a towel cutter? I feel like it's a must have tool because I think most jobs I can get away with doing using a towel cutter uh, and just a, a good grinder blade. So getting one of these CGX blades um, and you know getting one of the CGX blades and a towel cutter is, you know, I think you're gonna be more likely as, as a homeowner not if you're doing your bathroom to do other tiling projects, maybe you're going to tile your kitchen, maybe you're going to tile your foyer, maybe you're going to tile your powder room. And so you're going to be able to use that those blades on the grinder and in the towel cutter. And the towel cutter is obviously a lot easier to store and, you know, having your garage than having a big ta uh, um, wet saw. And the reason it's difficult to say which one they really get. Now, I have the wet saw in my must-have tools, but I, I really think you need to think about what you're actually doing before investing any of that stuff. Now, wet saws, you can always rent them. You can rent them from Home Depot. You can also do that with the towel cutters as well. But I think with the amount of tiling that is needed for a bathroom, you're only going to want to rent one of those for one or two days. And a lot of the times, the wet saws that... Um, or even the towel cutters, they're really not top notch. The people that are renting them out don't aren't buying the, the top notch stuff. They're just kind of going with the standard uh, MK sliders or the IQ or 
you know, there's a lot of stuff from Home Depot. They just don't, they're just not towel setters. They don't know what's a good towel cutter. But my two recommendations are now, if you're, if you're a professional and you're really getting into this seriously, I, I, you know, I can't see you getting better than this Montelit towel cutter. Now this is a 25 inch one. Now they range from all over the place. You could now get, I think you can get one now. It's like 48 inches. You can cut a 48 inch towel on potentially. I know they have the 36, but you know, they range on the different sizes, but the 25 inch one primarily does everything that I never needed to do. Um, because you know, most of the, my towel work still is 12 by 24s or underneath of that. Um, but that is, you know, really it's, it's a very accurate, um, um, towel cutter and uh, I think that would be an upgrade to anybody who's more serious about doing tiling for you know all the time now this mini Puma uh, this is a great little uh, it's the same version just a mini miniature one this is tremendous this is awesome for doing backsplashes doing um, you know anything under 12 inches for the most part well they 14 they have 14 inches it comes with a case you guess you get the 18 inch version as well 300 bucks still pretty pricey but hey if you're if you're a homeowner gonna be doing two bathrooms maybe the powder room um, now I mean 12 you know if you get into the 12 by 24s you're kind of screwed you're not gonna be able to do that on there but you can definitely get a good backsplash out of this this has a case it's in a smaller it's a much smaller you can you know store this in your attic pretty easily not a big problem um i could still get why people might cringe at that price it's still pretty pricey the other one i the one i started out with that i've been that they used for years now it's still 300 bucks so yeah i'm not sure if you can get away from um that kind of price range for something that's actually going to do a good job um you know you can get away with the stuff you're getting at the box stores but i honestly i don't they're not very accurate and i think you're going to have more frustration with them so, but the Ishii, this is a great towel cutter, 25 and a half inches. You know, in some ways, if you're a beginner and you never really did a whole lot, but you're still, you know, you, you can afford to buy a towel cutter, I'd probably buy this one first because this is just a little bit more user friendly, has a double rail guard on it. The Montelit, and you have to give me, uh, you know, anybody feedback from other contractors, but the Montelit, it's a very, very, uh, sensitive tool because it is precise so you'll see here when I'm cutting this I'm just ever so lightly uh, scoring that tile and that's one thing I had to get used to when I first used this I didn't I didn't even like this tile cutter when I first got it because it was so much different than what I was using before the issue you put a lot of pressure on that blade this one you're just looking for that sound so you can hear that little scoring sound it's like cutting a piece of glass. It's just like you just want to get it right at the right tension to make that scoring sound. So you have to be delicate with it. It's a very delicate tool, um, but it is very, very accurate. It makes some really clean cuts. I, I have never been able to cut like a one inch sliver off of a tile until I use that Montelit cutter. So, um, but this one, you'll definitely do get a good job with this one. I don't know if you'd be able to cut this down to an inch like the other, like like I was saying with the other one, but Hey, if, if, if it's an inch, you know, you might, um, you know, that's, that's a tough, that's a tough issue there. I mean, and, and if you get it less than that, then you, you almost need a wet saw or you need to use the grinder to go with it. So, um, okay. Thanks CJ. How did you know? So you can get a, a, you can get an adjustable locking nut on there. So yeah. Uh, thanks CJ. Yeah. Please give me a like on this video if you can. It definitely helps out the algorithm. Um, but I'm going to, I want to try some more, um, reasonably priced uh, towel cutters and, and see if I can come up with something I can suggest for somebody who do, isn't doing a bunch of bathrooms. But, you know, my thoughts were is that if you got a good grinder blade and a good, um, why do I keep clicking out of that? A good grinder blade and a good uh, towel cutter, you could pretty much do most projects, but you have to be paying attention to what you're actually installing. If you're doing marble, if you're doing any type of stone, you're gonna need a wet saw for that. There's no other way around it. Everything has to be done by a wet saw. So those are my um, options on there. Let me know what you think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into more. I mean, I'm gonna be going to coverings this year. I'm gonna look at some different manufacturers that sell different things uh, on, on towel cutters. And you know, really, I, I know most people probably want to be under that $200 or less uh, if they're not doing a whole bunch of different bathrooms. But I don't know if it's possible to find something that's actually worthy of using 
at that price. But uh, the Ishi, Montelit, two favorite ones for sure. Okay, so number three is a laser. Not necessarily recommending the Walt, but having a laser with a laser jam like this uh, is going to keep you. It's going to keep you straight. You know, it's definitely going to make a huge difference. Uh, so my lasers, um, that was the Dewalt that I'm using right there. And let me see. I've got to describe my checklist. No, you know, I should have just went back to preview. Yeah, there we go. All right. So under laser and pull. Okay. So this is the Dewalt laser that I have right now. You know, in a lot of ways, I'm not a hundred percent happy with it. It's a very expensive deal. It's five hundred dollars, but it has its own battery, um, and that's one of the things I'm not happy with. It only comes with one, uh, which is kind of ridiculous because when the battery goes dead, you have to wait until it charges up, or just make sure you think about charging it before you leave for the day. The other problem is this housing on here. Now this protects it for sure, but it also puts voids in your in your laser line. So I'm on, I'm constantly annoyed by the gap that is made by that housing on the top. So that's pretty annoying. Other than that, it is a really good laser. It really shoots out a very strong beam. You know, I've even used it out in daylight, you know, because when I'm, I'm building my garage right now, I had to use it for a reference of a level line. You know, even in daylight, it was still shooting and I could still see it on some of uh, my framing members and it worked great. But, uh, you know, for 500 bucks, oh boy, that's pretty painful. And, and I think some of the problems that it has with it is probably not worth it. I'm still in search for a really good laser. But the ones I used to use all the time and that I think are just simple. I mean, they're not even that much money. 60 bucks. Just a standard red Bosch laser. Um, you know, you can use one of these tripods. I hate tripods. I don't really like tripods. Uh, they're just more troublesome to, to raise up and down. Uh, you're, you're looking for a quick reference to be able to just immediately get that laser to where you need it. And I don't think a, uh, a tripod is something that makes it easy. I think it's something that makes it troublesome. It's in the way you're in a bathroom. That's only five foot wide. Like how in the hell do you have the room for a tripod? So, but 60 bucks, I would recommend that all day long, uh, for that price range. And then they have the DeWalt version, which would probably be a little bit better. Now the big craze about this, um, and, and this one has batteries, so you can just replace the batteries rather than have to wait for something to charge. But that's that's your mid-range point, the, the $140. I'd say, I'd say that's going to get you a decent um, laser at that point. But the real craze with the whole green laser, it does make it, it, it is, I feel like it is easier on your eyes. Um, and it is it does seem to have a stronger beam, um, but really not necessary whatsoever. I like it to be going over Schluter. <laughs> Because when you have that orange board, you can see the the uh, the green a lot better than you can the red. Um, but I don't see any you know any problem with the the red lasers. So that's take take that for what it is. Uh, my advice on that. But uh, that's basically right now. I'm gonna try the Stabila ones. That's one of the next one I want to try to try to get is Stabila. I think they might make some pretty good. Um, deals but the laser jams the one that i have in that video unfortunately i cannot find anywhere they don't have this exact model let me see if there's a better picture of it so this is called the light you can see how much thin sets all over this it's terrible but uh this is called the laser jam and it you it, it, it was like a full metal pull and you could just slide everything up i've had this for over a decade now really works out tremendous but I can't seem to find them anymore. The, 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 the company that made them is now making this different type of version of it. Still a pretty expensive laser jam, but I'm sure this thing probably works just as well. Uh, it's just basically up to 14 feet and it just has an apparatus to slide up and down. Um, I was really happy with the laser jam. I don't have any, you know, I had one contractor comment the other day about this uh, and he said, it, he said he's been very happy with it. Uh, so I'm still waiting a little bit more feedback on it, but I, I just absolutely love that, that original one that I had purchased. I wish they had the same model again, but the, probably the next best thing would be the DeWalt. They have one, basically just a, a laser pull that's going to allow you to, um, you know, force it between the wall and the ceiling and be able to adjust it. But you just want to have something that's adjustable. That's the most important thing, um, to be able to quickly adjust that thing and get it to where you need it. So 
Lasers are really important. Ever since they come out, it's really made things a lot, lot easier. Um, <laughs> the green makes the vibes good, CJ. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe you, maybe you have better luck with green than red. Yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I do like the green. I do like the green. I just don't know sometimes whether it's worth all the extra money that they're charging for it. I'm not sure exactly why it costs so much more, but um, yeah. But this, I, you know, I wish they would make this model back again. So fast cap, if you can make the old model back, I'd really, I'd promote it. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, you can see it. Just, you just want something quick and easy to just pull up. And then horseshoe shims, I've been touting this ever since I've been using them, using them for about a decade now as well. Cannot stress this enough. Get rid of those stupid uh, rubber washers that you might be getting at Home Depot or whatever. These things are tremendous. So much easier. You can double them up to, to make them bigger if you need them to. You know, you can reuse them and uh, they're not very much money. So it just makes everything much, much easier. And as you can see, you know, I'm basically able to just space everything out. These are the 16th inch spacers. That's usually all I buy, but you can get them in the eighth inch as well. And then um, another tool, you know, it's not a tiling tool, but it's something that really, really uh, I've been using forever is a linoleum knife. It's just used as a scraper. So again, I have this on that checklist. Just go straight to it. Uh, five bucks really makes it easier. As you see, I'm not, you know, I'm buying all this stuff. I'm not pushing anything. I'm not sponsored by any of these people. I don't plan to ever really get into that. I don't think it's worth the time. And I just always just want to have my own opinions about things and not being pushed by somebody trying to get me to sell their product this is i'm interested in trying i don't know if i'll like it or not but they do have a grout removal tool this might be helpful you know I, i'm going to try this out but that linoleum knife there's so many different ways you can use it and that's the reason that um i like it because not only am i scraping things out like this so getting into all those little tiny grooves and just kind of removing some of that stuff but i'm using it to uh, well, I didn't even, I don't have an image of that, but basically when I have a towel up against the, the corner here and I need to kind of push it over a little bit, I could just take that linoleum knife, wedge it in there and pull that tile over. So a lot of reasons that, um, a linoleum knife is really nice to do, to use, to scrape out all those joints. And then, uh, my next one would be a towel leveling system. These are only if you're doing towels over 12 inches long or you know, I mean, you can do it for less than that. You see that on a like, like eight inch hexagonal tile. You'll see somebody use that on all of them. But boy, these things make it so much nicer and easier uh, to do. And my favorite system is the uh, T-Lock leveling clips. Uh, T yeah, so the T-Lock leveling system here. Um, I, I You know what? I should tell you to review this because, the for instance, the, the Perfect Level Master, they come when different size spacers. Somebody was just asking me this today. Most of the time I just buy, I don't buy the kits. I buy the, the buy the bag. So you can buy them like a 1500 pack bag of these. But if you're only doing one bathroom, this is probably all you would need. It has a hundred wedges and 300 clips in a five by eight bathroom. I doubt you'll be going more than 300 clips unless you're doing some intricate towel work where you're doing like hexagonal tile where you're needing one on every single side of them. But on a normal 12 by 24 or something like that, you shouldn't need more than this entire kit. So it has 100 wedges and then 300 clips. I usually just buy the 32nd inch clips and then adjust the grout joints the way I like them. And the main reason is, is because when you're... People think uh, unusual you circumstances? Too, it's complicated taxes. That. But um, for a TurboTax Live expert like me, it just me. I have this video up. A wedge and clip system. This is... Uh, T-lock, so it's just a wedge and a clip that keeps the lippage between the tiles nice and uh, smooth and the transition easy. It also kind of holds everything together, makes it easier to tile. Um, one thing you want to pay attention to, though, is the edge of your tile. So if the bottom of your tile is pitched out from the top, that means that if you use a 16th inch grout joint, you're probably going to end up with 8th inch grout joints after what, what they look like. So pay attention to see how rectified the tile is. So if it bellows out, which most ceramics and porcelains do do, usually the finished surface is um, 
a little bit indented in and then the bottom kind of pans out. So pay attention to that. I prefer just getting one 32nd inch clips. So these not only do help with lippage, but they're also spacers as well. So that's, that's an important detail to note, um, especially if you're really trying to get to a specific grout size point. So if you don't know what your towel is, if you don't have your towel in, I would just order the one 32nd inch clips and adjust accordingly. You can always use those horseshoe shims to space that out. Otherwise, another popular size would be the 16th inch. And, um, you know, but again, just paying attention to that, that side of that tile, make sure if it's not rectified, you need to make a count for that because those, those spacers are going to make it look a little bit bigger. But this is what I normally buy is uh, like a 500 pack, much, much cheaper, 70 bucks, but you're going to need the wedges as well. So you're going to have to buy wedges as well. They're usually a hundred bucks uh, um, thing. So you, boy, you can get a lot more. So if you got them separately, you still get the hundred clips, but then you're going to have 500 clips versus 300. So, you know, maybe those kits aren't really the best bet, but if you, I always just use my hands for this. But they do make a little um, plier tool, you know. Uh, I find it more troublesome to use. I, I don't personally like them, but you know, it, if if you're not used to doing this stuff, you can wear out your fingers a bit trying to push them all in all the time. So, you know, it does make it nicer uh, using that tool. So, hey, Josh, good to see you. Thanks for coming um, by here. <laughs> I'm glad the linoleum life is working for you, Splaza. Yeah, I you know. I, I honestly did just come up with that on my own. I just had, I, I was looking for a scraper tool because if anybody sees me on my channel or any videos I've done in the past, you'll know that I'm not the cleanest uh, tile installer. I, I efficiently get things done. And that's one thing I plan to improve is my messiness and getting more precise and taking more of my time. But uh you know, and, and I think maybe that's just coming with age. I mean, you know, you, you just want to be a little bit more easier on your body, easier on what you're doing. So cleaning up your grout joints really would make a big difference. But I'm always going a thousand percent. And, you know, if, you know, there's a, there's a ton of excuses why I work the way that I do. But a lot of it has to do with having a tight schedule and trying to get things done. And I just... I just, I just ignore the mess and just get the product done because at the end of the day, that's all that matters is the end product. But yes, being neater is going to, would be a better way to go. But again, you, I mean, making sure that you have the right thin set coverage, making sure that, you know, everything's, you know, plum and level. Um, all those things are the things that you want to focus on the cleanliness, ah, you know, whatever. You know, you can always clean it up, but yeah, the linoleum knife was something I was in search for because, you know, I would be, I would have a, a lot of times when I'm doing a bathroom remodel, I do the, the towel floor at uh, day five and then I take the weekend off and then I come back on Monday. And so the, 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 the thin set had two days to dry. And so it's really, really difficult to get out. So that's where having a good scraper tool makes a big difference. But yes, being cleaner, being neater, will make a make a world of difference i do plan on you know improving on that so here's another one these are must-haves okay these are must-have tools so far um you know that my my biggest debate is you know is that depend is evaluating what kind of diamond blade to get these can get really expensive but i did recommend just the the cgx one which is about 50 bucks the towel cutters again are a pricey thing it's difficult to um, get something that's really good. I'm going to try to test some more things out. I'd love to get some feedback from you guys. Anybody who's done some other tiling work. Hey, if the IQ, uh, towel cutter that was a hundred bucks works great for you, let me know. I, I would love to, uh, recommend that to somebody, but I'm still with like these, these bigger brands that, uh, are made for professionals. It's just, it, I don't know. It's hard to go back after you start using the Montelit brand or, or some of these other ones, but a laser with a laser pull horseshoe shim for spacers. That scraper, that, that um, linoleum knife, the towel leveling system, perfect level master. I was going to say, there's other options out there. You don't have to go with the wedge and clip system. You can go with these spin doctors. I know a lot of guys that are loving these type of things. Tal Bro, if you ever see him on TikTok or Instagram, that's all he uses are these things. These are very precise and nice. I used them um, for the first time a couple of months ago. They work great. They work great to me. I didn't like having to spin them off the next 
day. I didn't like having to take each one of these apart. So that to me, eh, I, don't, I don't really see myself doing it. It is a precise uh, leveling system. And I think that if you were doing something sensitive, like a really high gloss marble, this might make a lot of sense. They have these little protector pads for them. And you can, you can, it's, you're, you're just spinning them on there rather than taking that wedge and just kind of like, you know, wedge, you know, you're putting a lot more force with the wedge. Uh, so the spin doctors, great option. I just, I don't foresee myself using them very much. I don't like taking all of that apart the next day. That just seems like a waste of time to me. Levtech is another one. This is another wedge and clip system. Um, you know, this is definitely a lot of guys use this. I just like perfect level master because the clips are so, so strong. I, and I, I really have never had an issue. These ones I still do like, I do use these <laughs> as funny as it is. I mean, I haven't really bought them in a long time. But these are the two song leveling clips. You know, you, you don't need any other tool. They're, it's a, just a one part system. You just pinch them together. It, they're expensive. They're expensive. Um, you know, I mean, this is a 500 piece box. That's probably what you would need. Uh, well, you don't need 500 pieces, but you probably at least need 300 and they only make them in 150 uh, size boxes. So, but I still like these a lot. These still do work great. Um, I just, most of them are mainly for like four by 12 tile or something smaller that I use them on because they don't have quite the tension that uh, perfect level master does have. So, but those are the options on the, the tile leveling systems that I like so far. But uh, let me see here. Yeah, so getting back to uh, my video here. <laughs> Yes, Ryan, I, I'm fully with you, man. I am exactly the same way. I am not clean at all, but I don't let customers see my mess. It's unorganized, but I'm the most efficient and promise you that. Yes, that's exactly where I'm at too, man. I'm efficient. I get things done. Everyone that I ever worked for always like, wow, I can't believe you got that much done. You know, and um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm videoing all my stuff. So I am showing how much of a mess that I am. Uh, but, you know, again, that's that's one of my weaknesses I'm trying to to work on and I plan to, especially with all the, you know, with everyone always mentioning that. So, but anyways, next must have trials. You need a bunch of them. You can't just, there isn't just one size fit all. So if you're doing Schluter Dietra, you're gonna want a Dietra trial. You don't have to buy the Dietra trial. It's just a 3 16 inch square enough trial. Membranes, like the Schluter membrane, you're gonna need the eight by eight, uh, quarter by three eighths. You're gonna need that to set a shower pan if you're doing it. I also use that for a larger tile as well. It's a good um, size trial to have. Quarter by quarter, pretty much always have to have this. This is for setting mosaics, setting uh, shower floor tile like this works great. Um, you know, you can't get away with a quarter by quarter. I would pretty much say you have to pretty much have one of those. This one is an optional one, but I like this for larger tile. Those are eight by 24 inch tile. So the Yora Notch trial works great. And then for your much bigger tile, you're gonna want the half inch by half inch. So you wouldn't need all of these for every single bathroom, but you better consider which ones you're gonna need for the size of the towel that you're using. So, um, you know, and I have them in this checklist. Again, you can go in the description below and find that, but I basically have them all outlined here. So three six by three sixteenths, that's what you use for Dietra or, or very thin towel, I should say. So a lot of these mosaics these days, they're, they're like a quarter inch thick. So I would probably use a 3 16 by 3 16 notch trowel to put that on some curdy membrane potentially so that I can set that up to be able to install the next day. Uh, so, you know, I would say you're, if you're doing Schluter Dietra, you're going to have to have a 3 16 by 3 16 trowel. And then if you're doing Schluter Dietra, you're going to probably need it for the membrane that goes over top and that's going to require an eighth by eighth. So these two trowels I think are a must. You don't have to buy the Schluter brand, obviously. I just have the links there in case you want to buy them for that. So they are a little bit more pricey than what you can get from other places. Quarter by quarter, I could pretty much say right off the bat, you're probably going to need that. Um, I like these aux tools. So again, you, these um, this aux, they, they really are great tools and that's not very much money. So you can probably get all these different styles trials under a hundred bucks, um, but it's it's better to have it than not to have them. Quarter by three days. If you're doing a Schluter pan, you're going to need it. But again, it's only 12 bucks. This is not bad because if, say for instance, you do to put up that four by 12 tile and you're not getting very good coverage, you're gonna wanna up up the, to the next size and that would be the quarter by three A's. 
Um, trial sizes aren't dictated by the size of tile. It's dictated by the coverage that you're actually achieving. So you always have to trial your uh, ridge lines on and set a piece of tile and then pull it off and see what kind of coverage you're getting. And if you're not getting good coverage, which would be 95% in a shower area, and you don't see that good coverage, you're gonna to have to go to the next size up. So I would still probably recommend just buying this quarter by three eighths inch trial. Your trial, like I said, is not a, a, a must, but I love these size trials. It's kind of a combination between the half inch uh, by half inch and then the three eighths by quarter. It's kind of a combination of the both. So it, it gives you a, a lower thickness of thin set, but it gives you good coverage by the way that the trowels or by the way the ridges collapse on each other. It just kind of creates a better um, bond, I guess you could say. So I, I always have that. I primarily use that for 12 by 24s. And then for floors, okay, so if you're going over Detra, okay, this is one thing you have to pay attention to. When you're going over Detra and you waterproof the entire floor, waterproofing the entire floor requires you to use the the membrane the the curdy membrane on top of this okay so going back here to where we were using the eighth by eighth inch notch trial just to give you a, a quick reference i don't have any videos pulled up on this right now but um so this you're going to be putting that curdy band over top of this okay this is going to cause a little bit of a height difference from where i'm kneeling to where this is at you have to account for that. You have to think about that when you're gonna set your towel. Now, most of the time in a bathroom like this, I'm gonna start off this back wall here. I'm gonna reference my tub for squareness. So I'm gonna make, because I, I think that's the most focal point of the bathroom. You're gonna have a vanity here. You're gonna have a toilet here. So who really cares what the, the, uh, the straight line on the back of that wall looks like, okay? It's gonna be the tub. You're gonna see the tub. So that's where you're gonna reference your, your squareness for your tile layout. I mean, unless you're really, really off, unless you're really exuberantly off on square, this is pretty much the way I go about it. So I use this as my reference and I start from this back wall and work my way out of the bathroom. Obviously you need an exit plan to get out when you're tiling. So, you know, starting on that back wall. But if you started with a really low profile trowel back here, by the time you get here, you're gonna have a hard time getting that to all align in with each other. So this is where I, if I use a Ditra, I recommend using a, uh, a half inch by three eighths or a half inch by half inch. And these are for larger tile. These are for, um, you know, 12 by 24s or bigger. You can't go wrong with the half inch by half inch. You really can't. I mean, you're going to have a lot more thin set. You're going to get a little bit more thickness out of everything, but you're going to overcome that Detra membrane. All too many times people have, I have issues with sometimes. If I use that Yora notch trowel on here, I always have, I'm always fighting this area a little bit. It's not much. It's only about a 16th inch of a difference, but it, it makes a difference if you have a thicker tile layer or thin set layer on this back edge of the room and work your way out, you'll be able to overcome that very easily. You just don't want to start out with too small. You don't want to be using a quarter by quarter inch square notch trial to set your floor tile. You just don't. It's You're probably not going to get the coverage you need and you're not going to be able to overcome things like that. So that's my best um, advice on on trials and again i have that um oh, shrink that down again i didn't mean to do that um yeah let me go back here so i have them all on my checklist but i mean you know yeah you're, you're going to be spending some money on all of this stuff but you have to evaluate what you're doing you know if you're only doing one bathroom you might not need all of these but if you're doing detroit you're going to need a big a big quantity of these so pay attention to that when you're ordering things and if you get them all from you know like the uh, ox tools you, again you'll probably be able to get five or six trial different trial sizes and be under a hundred bucks so it's not really that that painful in a lot of ways uh yeah splaza the the trial cut sizes with the kits i i don't i haven't tried them i want to say i haven't tried them so let me just look at that trial what would you call that? That would be uh, switchable trowels. I don't know what if there's a big brand out there that makes them. I'm sure they do. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. There's ones that you can change out the blades. Okay, yeah, RTC. 
So yeah, 86 bucks. So, so, I mean, you're getting what? One, two, three, four, five, six. You're getting six different trowels and you can see they have the uh, Yora Notch trowel on there. Um, I can tell you right now, I would have a problem with these trowels because I'm a mess. <laughs> and I'm going to get thin set all over these things and this is going to be a real pain in the ass for me to get back on there. Uh, but that's not a bad option, but 86 bucks, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, six trowels. I think you can still get the ox ones. I mean, it is a nice little box. You have them all in that nice little box. I do agree with that. I don't know, man. That that's a good thing to, to think about. If you're a, if you're a pretty clean person, I think these look great because then you can just switch the handles. I don't know. I'd have to try them out to see if I really like them. I mean, Russo is a um, a pretty big brand. It should be pretty good, but uh, at, at ninety bucks, I don't know. I mean, I I think it's because they have the container with it that does kind of make it nice. But yeah, they have. The Tiger, the Euro Trial that I was recommending, quarter by three sixteenths, quarter by quarter, quarter by three eighths, quarter by half, half by half. So you don't have the Detra three sixteenths by three sixteenths, and you don't have the eighth by eighth. What's the V notch? Which one's the V notch? Quarter by three. You can set Detra with the quarter by three sixteenths V notch, but you're not going to be able to use that for the Curdy membrane. You're going to need eighth by eighth for that. So you're still going to have to buy another one. On top of it. that's a good question though um that's definitely a good thought there um i just don't know if it's worth it and i already know myself that i these are going to be hard for me to keep clean <laughs> so yeah i don't know if i can answer that girl um all right so let me go back here so it must have pal tools so that was my trials and then we'll, we'll go further into this video here shortly um, and having a good grout float, um, that's definitely a must. You can't, you can't really do a bathroom remodel or a towel, a lot of towel work without a, um, a good grout float. The, that grabo thing is actually pretty nice. So this is a good grout float. Um, I use this for epoxy. I use this for your things. Uh, I don't know. 15 bucks. Definitely going to be better than any of those rubber crap ones you get from Home Depot. I would stay away from that stuff. Uh, definitely order these ahead of time. Oh, that was my trials. My grout floats. So the Troxel, my go-to right there for sure. Uh, four by nine, reasonable size. And it just has a nice flexibility. It's great for epoxy, great for your thing. Uh, and it really does a great job of, of wiping everything off. So I can't really say much more about that. 20 bucks, very, you'll be happy with that. My other go-tos are the Marshall Towns. Can't go with wrong with that, but since I bought that Troxel, I haven't really bought one of these in a while, but these are great. Uh, still about 20 bucks. Definitely gonna be better than anything you get at the box stores. Uh, you wanna get one of these for tight spaces. So this could be for like a glass mosaic in the back of a, uh, uh, of a niche or something like that. So having it um, being a little bit smaller makes a big difference. But then I also like getting, oh, I, did I not have that? Okay, Superior, I've been meaning to use one of these. I see a lot of guys using these that really like them a lot. You know, I forgot to add my uh, margin trowel. So my uh, margin, I forgot, that. I don't know why I lost, forgot that. My margin trowel float. Yeah, so one of these, uh, which one do I have? Yeah, one of these, these are fine. Yeah, this is good. So one of these is a grout float, just a margin trowel. This really helps out like in those small little pieces, uh, like li little tiny niches, different areas like that. It just helps to apply it better. So that is a, um, you know, I'll have to put that in there as well for the grout floats. I don't know why, I thought I had that somewhere. I guess I, it must be in my course. I must have it in my course. But uh, the grout floats, um, yeah, I must have for sure. There's no other way around it. And then, uh, you know, I this is, I mean, it is a towel tool. I'm sorry, it is a towel tool. A, scr a white scrubby pad. Uh, if you're a mess, if you're doing grouting, it's, it's abs an absolute ma uh, must. Uh, and I usually have about a half a dozen of these at any given time on, on a job. So I have links into that here as well under scrubby pad. So you're just getting a, getting a five pack would probably get you by 
cut them in half with the utility knife and you'll get a lot more out of them. Uh, and then my next one was the Ardex sponges. I, you know, I'm just going to say they're like this, these are the best sponges out there. I haven't found anything close to it. Um, it's, it's just the square edges make it tool with things easier. You're able to, um, they're just, I don't know. I mean, I wish I, I actually, I'm going to go to an Ardex uh, class sometime. I'm going to ask them a little bit more about their sponges and why they are, seem to be so much better. They just outlast everything else. They seem to hold the most amount of, you know, when you're using uh, doing epoxy grout, you can you can fill up these um, sponge pores very quickly, and then all of a sudden it's not doing its job by wiping off the tile. And the Ardex sponges definitely 100% have been lasting two to three times longer than a regular one. But so if you're doing epoxy grout, you're gonna at least need two of these sponges. They are not cheap. Everyone complains about that, and I totally get that, but you won't regret it. At least have two of these for your grouting time. You don't need to be using this to uh, keep your blade cold on your uh, grinder. That could be a little bit of an expensive way to do it. Get your cheaper sponges for that. But for the actual um, grouting process, I definitely would recommend spending the 20 bucks for that. So I think the sponges are, Arctic sponges are kind of a must have having that because it really makes the job you can really ruin a towel job by having a bad crowding project okay then my last one here and this is for pretty much for any type of uh grouting job for the most part or microfiber claws this is going to make sure that you get rid of all of that haze from the epoxy so just buying a, a dozen of these for your jobs is going to make a real difference for you. Um, it's going to make it. It's just going to take it. It's going to take the time out of making sure that you get all of that haze off of here. If you're using epoxy, if you're using a premix grout, if you're using Mape CQ, if you're whatever you're using that's not a traditional grout, um, these microfiber cloths are going to because you want to wipe off that excess water. If that water has that premix grout in it or the epoxy in it, it's going to it's going to speckle on you and when you look up at the light you're going to see a streak and that's where the just wiping it down with a microfiber cloth makes a world world of difference and then then i do have this on here as a as a must have and again i'm really having a hard time debating on this you can you know you can go either way you know you can have a wet saw and a grinder and pretty much do every job that you need to do it's just going to take a lot more time it really is, you know, running down those steps or running out to the outside to, to, to cut your tile, uh, you know, on every single cut is definitely going to wear you out. Um, that's why, again, I like having the towel cutter and my grinder, but it depends on what you're using. Uh, if you're doing marble or stone, you're going to have to have a towel saw. You really, really are. And I reckon, I, I still highly recommend these DeWalt's. I've had a lot of very expensive towel saws over the years. And this thing has just always been dependable. That thing's probably, I don't even know, uh, 10, 15 years old, and it's still working great. But just a standard old DeWalt wet saw. I don't know how DeWalt all of us, you know, made such a good saw, but you'll see most professionals are using this type of saw. Uh, it's not cheap. It's definitely not cheap. But you know, you're not gonna really. I don't, you know, I don't know what Harbor Freight has these days. If any of you buy your tools from there, I'm not against. For Harbor Freight, there's a lot of stuff that I actually buy from there that actually is pretty, pretty decent. Uh, I think I have one of those big jackhammers, 500 bucks, pretty much a third of the cost. What a a Bosch or a Milwaukee or a um, what would you call it? Hilt, definitely a Hilti hammer uh, drill. Uh, so there's a lot of things there that are great. I don't know anything about the towel saws though. You might be able to get one there for 200 bucks and do the job. Um, but if I were to recommend somebody a towel saw, if you're doing this more seriously. I would recommend that the Walt. Uh, so, you know, it, I think it's just a very universal. Now, they, you know, they're they are getting bigger because we're getting bigger and bigger tile. Uh, so, you know, you, you might want to upgrade to the the next level, which would be the. Um, there's one that does 36 inch tiles as well, but you're getting well over a thousand bucks for that. But I wanted to reference the wet saw because it is um, something that you can't get away with, especially if you're um, using stone. You know stuff like that you're gonna have to be able to cut them on there so and then we'll get into my bonus materials here these are not a must these are just nice to have um, 
yeah, it's, uh, I don't know how you pronounce that, Krill. Uh, yeah, the polished stones. No, their scrubby patch shouldn't cause that kind of problem. Um, not at all. Uh, I've never had any type of scratch. Now, I mean, you could, if you used like a, 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 a sanded grout of some sort, uh, that can always uh, scratch marble or stone. So you have to be careful about the grout, the type of grout you're using. Uh, you know, obviously the manufacturer is going to say use an unsanded, um, uh, an unsanded grout, and that's going to be your safest bet. But you know, the epoxies, uh, some of these fine premixes, they work pretty well. Uh, but uh, you just have to kind of test an area. So if you have a high polished marble, uh, you know, I would probably you know steer away from some of these premixes. I would not go with my pay CQ. It's too gritty. It could potentially scratch it. I wouldn't go with uh, quartz lock. Uh, that's that's a premix as well. That's pretty gritty. Um, you know the Spectralock one probably do you well, uh, but then you want to maybe think about just doing your traditional grouts like the Permacolor or uh, or the uh, Mape FA. That's not very gritty. Or then you could just go with your traditional unsanded grouts. So um, be careful about yeah what you're using. But no, those white scrubby pads aren't going to be any big deal so but krill yeah as far as um you know my other site there yeah no nah, that's you know there's there's a lot of gaslighting going on there krill and 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 and, and to, for me to respond to um a lot of the stuff that uh, you know he's mentioned on home repair tutor it's really it's not really going to get anywhere it doesn't really make any sense but uh, maybe someday i'll get into it but i you know it's 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 best to who cares? No one really cares. It's, I mean, it's, you know, I'm trying to create this new platform and educate. So is he, so good for him. But, uh, no, there's a lot of disagreement, a lot of gaslighting going on there. A lot of things that, uh, you know, I don't know if we'll ever be able to resolve, but, uh, just know that, um, it was never my choice to leave that platform or, um, uh, not have contact with the members. That's one of the things that's really bothering me right now and I'll get over it. But, you know, I just hope he stops selling the courses that, um, don't involve me um, because I, I don't think that's fair to the the people that are purchasing it. I mean, honestly, when you go on here, I mean, I hate to get into all of this, but it's just, you know, when you're going and looking at this, it still looks like I'm part of the whole thing and I'm not. So I don't understand why I'm. Can't find server. Okay, whatever. Maybe that's a sign. We don't even need to go there. Anyways, we can get into that someday. Anyways, um, um. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mike. It is has really gone off. I mean, twenty thousand people now. I, I just, I, I'm in, I'm in shock. I'm, I'm really, really enthused by it. So let's keep going on here. And maybe some curl I can get into that, but you know, it's really not worth. You know, it's just, just know that it's, it's just not exactly the way that it is. So this is another great system. This saves me a lot of time having to run up and down the hill, up up and down the steps. Having a grinder with a shop vac. Uh, now I always have the corded one for that because this is a a type of um, shop vac that you can plug in your tools and it'll turn on uh, the shop vac when you're using it. So that's why I use a corded. But this Makita, great great um, paddle switch type of grinder. I would recommend that if you wanted to get a, a corded grinder. I think Makita, it's very reasonable. It's not very much money. I still highlight my DNA blade. I still like that a lot, but then the apparatus to go around that grinder is this fine tool. And, uh, you know, the covers kind of stink. Um, <laughs> not an expert. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the, uh, uh, the grinder covers are, um, you know, they're a little bit troublesome. They are hard to see the lines, but you know, a lot of this is just for small accurate or um, non-accurate cuts. Now I, I am doing a, a glass shelf cutting here, so it is a little bit accurate. And I've gotten used to it and knowing where my blade is, but this is more or less just for, um, you know, adjust cutting things, using it for the scribe cut. It just it eliminates, you know, really causing a major dust in a lot of people's homes. So it really makes a difference. But this is definitely by no means a must have. It's just something that if you're a contractor, you might want to consider getting because it really makes a big difference. So I have that in my checklist as well. Again, you can always go down 
in the description of this and I have them a link in this live chat but this paddle switch um, 71 bucks not very expensive it's not like that $300 cordless uh, Milwaukee you don't need a cordless grinder you can go with the corded one works just as well uh, and uh, much much cheaper but I, I really am happy I'm happy with that uh, this is the dust route not a cheap adventure to add this on but this really works well and then the fine shop vac they are not cheap as well either these are HEPA vac systems uh, let me see where they even have uh, 345 bucks yes yeah, so not not cheap but uh, yeah you plug that in you can have other option you know turning it on full speed or putting in the uh, the the plug-in adapter so these are just recommendations I'm not you know this is like I said I am not sponsored by any of this stuff this is just things that I've found over the years and this is not a must-have this is definitely something that is just kind of a bonus and for doing it all the time um, really really helpful so Uh, I need to use con Appreciate it. you have an uneven concrete where it's damaged okay so depending on how it's damaged or, or do you have additional thin set that's still on the floor or uh, this is to know not an expert uh, you know you have to be careful about how damaged your concrete is if you have a major crack if you have major structural issues with the concrete uh, you know you can't you're not gonna be able to towel over it it's gonna it's gonna end up cracking wherever that major settling issue is uh if it's uneven you know you might want to floor level the whole thing um you know but if it's a major crack or a structural problem there's not much advice that i can really give you other than to cut out that area and try to add new concrete and reinforce which is totally not what you want to hear um but yeah i mean it's uh but as far as grinding goes do i have that on here I think I do have yeah so uh, I have these are all additional tools I just have on here that I've been trying to rack my brain about everything that I use on a on a job basis that helps me out but yeah these um, thin set removal blades uh, not an expert you put that on your grinder helps out a lot now this is gonna definitely get um, pretty messy without a dust shroud they do sell dust shrouds they always recommend here uh, which I can be pricey. I'm sure that's a hundred bucks almost to it. Yeah, so uh, that would help out with remaining dust. But honestly, when I use this, I usually just uh, saturate the floor with water, and then it's not going to be so dusty. Um, but this is a way to get the thin set off. Um, maybe kind of correct some unevenness. But you're going to need to get that. Um, you're going to have to have that. I think I feel like you're not going to want to use your cordless grinder on that. You're going to want to use uh, a real corded. Um, unit because it's it can it can burn out uh those there's those grinding wheel uh things that they're it's good you can use on a cordless grinder if you're just doing a little bit of stuff but if you're really trying to aggressively scour a floor you're going to want to get a corded one to do that so well thanks mike i appreciate it um okay so then what was that polishing pads these are um it's not a new thing but it's kind of a something that in the last three years i've been seeing people use especially when we're getting these bigger tiles and we're starting to use them on um shower floors and things this is just a, a nice it's not very expensive but it's a nice kit to put on your grinder and just kind of smooth out your edges so i actually just bought a kit of, <laughs> yeah november 21 that's how new i am to getting these polishing pads but i think they, they are nice i mean they definitely i did a um, basically this floor right here was basically a shower floor i have that on my youtube channel if you're interested in seeing that but these are basically four pieces of tile uh 18 by 36 inch and you know you have to cut the relief cuts in order for everything to pitch down to the drain so it's nice to polish those edges and make sure that they're not sharp so this is a nice cheap little bonus that i think is um good to have in your you know your tool kit of material of, of tools And then this makes a real difference. Um, if you're a contractor and doing this stuff all the time, having a good mixer, you'll get the benefit of everything that you can get out of your thin set. I was reluctant on these. I really, I really was. I, I didn't, I didn't think they would be worth what they are. Um, this is a cola mix mixer. They're, they are expensive. They are expensive. Three hundred seventy-five bucks. But this. 
Um, it really, the RPMs on it work tremendous. Uh, and when you mix your mud so nicely with this stuff, it, it lasts so much longer. It, it, the, everything about your thin set is nicer with a good mixture. Not saying you need this, you don't need this, but this is something that if you're a professional, thinking about doing a lot more of it, I really, those things are awesome. The other thing, you know, I should add that on to this list, um, but the other, you know, the, it was a cordless one. And I mean, you could just get the IQ, honestly, let's just look at that because that's not very expensive. Um, IQ mud mixer. I don't think those are very expensive. Uh, yeah, even even any of these knockoff brands are gonna get the job done. I actually had one from Harbor Freight that looked like this. And uh, it was about the same price, 70 bucks. And it lasted forever. I probably mixed, you know, 100 buckets of thin set, maybe even more than that. Uh, but having a good mixer, not using your, your drill, your regular corded or cordless drill um you know again it's not a must have it's just something that really you'll get the benefit out of it because it mixes the mud so well but i really like that cola mix i was going to say uh, on top of those polish pads you can also get these hand diamond pads these are just nice to just you know kind of sharpen up an edge or, or soften an edge i should say uh you know especially if you're going against a schluter edge on the outs if you had to cut a piece of tile and you're using schluter edging as far as the edge of your tile these are nice you don't need those polishing pads and these aren't cheap either you've got a kit of them for 50 bucks but they're they they, they really take the uh you know the sharpness off of things and kind of smooth out those edges so so not an expert uh, remove the thunder of really tiny I got the hammer drill and flat tip. This is works very well for removing the thunder off. But yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So not an expert. I mean, you might on top of that, after you're scraping off all those big chunks, just get one of these uh, thin set removal uh, tools and just grinding that down to make it a little bit smoother. You don't have to, it doesn't have to all come off. If it's, if it's on there that well, there's no problem with thin setting over that. It's just, you know, if you want to make it smooth so that you can have an easier time getting a level floor, you might want to, you know, you might want to grind that down a little bit. Uh, and let me see if I had anything else. This might have been the end of my video. No, oh, this was just the last video. Yep. Guess it does make it easier. That thing is gonna look terrible. <laughs> it's gonna be totally covered. Oh, just, just the way. Yeah, so I'm just admitting there again that I'm a mess and I know it. But that Grabo, uh, I just bought one of these. This is kind of a new tool craze. I've never seen any of these things five, even five years ago, honestly. But what's awesome about that, <clears throat> you could put it on a sheet of drywall, you could put it on a sheet of plywood, you could carry all types of different materials with it. Uh, pretty awesome. So, it, you know, with these big 18 by 36 inch tiles, Definitely not a must-have, but it definitely made it nicer. So I, I'm I'm happy with it because I think it's going to save my back on some things. I, you know, just started using that to pull drywall around. It was kind of nice. Definitely made it a little bit easier. So, um, but uh, no, I don't even have my oscillate. Shoot, I don't know why it doesn't have my plus symbol on there. Anyways, oscillating tool. That's another important tool. That that's it's almost a must-have. It's almost a must-have. Uh, because you can always use this for tiling going under, um, you know, cutting out your door jams. So this multi-master um, oscillating tool, this is definitely going to come in handy for so many things. Um, not necessarily a must have, but if you're doing a tile floor and you need to go underneath your door jam, this is a great way to do it. But you'll find yourself using this for all types of things, whether it's just a... Um, you know, uh, an adjustment cut on, you know, on your, on your trim, rather than have to run down to the trim saw again, you can just kind of bevel the back end of your base trim and, and get that to work. Or um, you're putting an outlet in a cabinet somewhere. Um, you're having a hard time cutting a piece of plumbing somewhere. You want to be more accurate with cutting out your drywall around your tub surround. Say, say if you want to keep your walls for some reason, this would be a more accurate tool rather than a sawzall. It'll allow you to get more accurate to cut out things. 
So this is a um, not a must-have, but I'd say for bathroom remodeling, it might be actually a must-have. I'll probably make a list on must-haves for uh, for for all bathroom remodeling. But since we're just focused now, oh, here we go. This is the margin trial. This is not a must-have tool, but it was something that I thought would be is helpful for those tight spots, those niches, those areas that uh, are tough to get into. Um, assortment of hole saws. So, you know, if you're doing a walk-in shower, you got your, your discussion valves, or you have a port, uh, your shower head port, your tub spout port. These are great. This is a, I mean, this is obviously a huge kit. You don't need to buy a full kit. You could just get the towel blade that you want. And the ones I always recommend are the, uh, the Diamond Plus from Milwaukee. I think you'll find most of these at your big box stores. This is a quarter inch one, um, but they do make it like the other common size one is the one inch. Um, well, they have five A's. Yeah, so this is another common one. If I were to do just a tub surround and a like the, that bathroom that's in my course, I'd buy two. I'd buy two. I'd buy the one inch for my shower port or for my tub spout port and my shower arm port. And then I would buy the quarter inch ones because I'm going to need that for installing accessories. You know, so if you're going to put a grab bar in, if you're going to put your shower, if you have a shower rod that requires you to drill through the tile, that's what you're going to want to, um, th these are going to outlast a lot of other blades for sure. You know, I keep getting recommendations on this. I used to use these all the time as well. Um, they're not very expensive, but they will burn out. Uh, porcelain, I mean, they're, they're not bad. Um, well, this is actually for glass and ceramics, so that's probably why. But uh, pay attention to it, but I'm, I'm really happy with those um, Milwaukee Diamond Plus blades. They seem to be uh, really work well. Okay, so then what else we have? So margin trowel, diamond hole sauce. This is another awesome tool for, um, ah, I'm out of my preview point here. Uh, drip free caulking guns if you don't know a lot about caulking guns you got to go to the site this newborn caulking gun site at you will be blown away by i mean i hadn't i didn't really pay attention to all these different thrust ratios to i mean there's just a lot of information about uh caulking guns i had no i had no idea uh until i found out about this company so these are all really um specialized caulking guns um and they really make a big difference having a caulk free this is the, my favorite one this is the one i always used it's only 18 bucks um but you'll find that you know using silicone using different things that really is drip free really takes the frustration out of things so check that out in that link but again you know you can get them on amazon yeah 17 dollars you you won't you won't regret it. Um, makes a big difference. Keeps that caulking from just smearing out constantly. Um, what else we got? Uh, scale for a, this is definitely not a necessary thing, but I do have this now because when I'm mixing smaller quantities of thin set, say if I just have my bathroom a regular forty square foot bathroom floor, I need a half a bag of Schluter All Set for the um, setting the membrane. I can easily just weigh it out. If I'm having a bag of grout, I'm only wanting to use half a bag. You know, adding water ratios to your thin set or grouts and anything new these days is really important. You can't just go by looks. It has to be by water ratio. They have a lot of science in this stuff now. And if you follow their guidance, you'll get the most out of your thin set. So definitely not a must, but it's definitely a nice tool to have. Um, if you're doing mud work, uh, you know, or needing to mix a bag of concrete in a bucket this thing is awesome it's a 100 bucks but if you you know it's really really awesome uh, it makes it so much easier to mix a, a really thick consistency of if you're doing mud beds you, you know you can't have that too wet it needs to be formed into a ball you can't have it you can't have it too wet or it's not going to work effectively so a bucket mud mortar mixer huge difference and uh, usage. I definitely recommend that. I use that for you know mixing concrete. If I'm setting a tub and I need some mortar underneath of it, I use that type of mixer for that. It works out really great. So that's more if you're a contractor doing all this stuff. A wood float, that's nice to embed your um, uh, detra mat in, you know, forming mud beds, you know, lots of different things like that. Definitely not necessary though, but something that I always have on hand. 
these this is probably just should be a, a must have up there but i you know you don't want to have all these thin sets and everything on your hands all the time um you know i've definitely now wearing my rubber gloves all the time because after 20 years of doing this stuff my hands are constantly dry and it's just not good for it um so i i these gloves i've been really happy with so i have a link in the description there for that epoxy grouting some people are allergic to the epoxy or the latexes in some of these things so wear rubber gloves i guess if you're allergic to latex you wouldn't be able to wear the gloves but um another tool that's helpful this is good for penny tile for glass is uh, a towel nipper you know i rarely use this but it's something that you know if i am doing the penny tile if i'm trying to do a, just a touch-up kit or it's something touching up something this is uh, a nice tool to have i actually did a um a, a curved recess niche and this helped out uh rather than me having to use my grinder because a lot of times a grinder doesn't do a very good job of cutting glass so the glass nippers definitely make a big difference <laughs> thanks mike uh measuring buckets this is just to kind of highlight that you need to be measuring the quantities of water for different things so i mean obviously this is a 12 pack of five quart buckets you don't need that but i'm just referencing that because you want to have that on hand uh to measure your for your water um you know what not an expert if you're still on here this might be something depending on how big your floor is can make a make it a little bit easier for you so I know it's 177 bucks. I, you know, if you're if that's all you're doing, I, I highly doubt you would get into this. But this is a whole kit for self leveler. If you need to level out a, a big area, um, you can mix two buck bags of leveler on there, which makes it easier to get a nice smooth floor, being able to pour more at once. Um, but I just recommend that because I always have that um, somewhere. Definitely not a necess necessity thing especially towel bits these are kind of for your areas that um you know maybe you didn't plan out very well maybe you did you, you ended up finding out that you you didn't cut enough of an area around a, a shower valve so these things are nice um, actually this is a drill bit i need to try some of these these are dry drill bits um, made by montelit these are probably better than any of those milwaukee diamond plus bits but the milling tool this is a nice just to have on hand in case you screwed something up and you need to bore out that after all the towel is set. So these are great for, uh, you know, around shower valves, just kind of opening up the, the hole a little bit more so you can get, uh, you know, get the, the, the depth you need for whatever you're doing it on. But then having these, ex, you know, these other milling tools as well, these are just for more specialty you know, I'm in a tight spot type of thing. So if you're a contractor, I would recommend having some of those things on hand. It'll save you some time and aggravation. And then again, at the bottom, I had the, the Diamond Plus bits because I think they're the most affordable. So, but that kind of goes through my uh, must-have tools. I hope that's helpful for you. Again, check out that checklist below. And I have the video on my YouTube channel. But also, I have some links in here just for my tub and shower course. So you can always go here and enroll in that a lot of great information in here even if you're just doing a uh, a walk-in shower i mean i'm mean, planning to get a, a walk-in shower course here shortly but this goes through you know a lot of the general stuff that you would be doing in a um a shower as well so you know you'll definitely get the value uh, i feel out of this and again you know if there are some members in here that were bathroom repair tutor members i'd be happy to send you a discount code just uh leave me a comment below or you know, find me on social media and I can uh, send you over that discounted um, deal. I also have that glass enclosure uh, course here. This is gonna help you do your own custom glass. It has these templates that you'll be able to easily fill out and have them, give them to your supplier. It's very important to have uh, good communication with your glass enclosure company. Make sure, you know, the, the better that you can put this together for them, the more likely that they're gonna be able to uh, they're not going to give you problems with uh, ordering your glass, especially if you haven't done it before. They're, I know a lot of glass companies are just like, eh, I don't even want to order because I don't want to be responsible for any mismeasuring. So that being prepared uh, with, you know, organized stuff like that. Hey, and if, um, you know, if you want to buy me a coffee to help support the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Got that link here. And then again, any suggestions, go to my link tree. I have a lot of this stuff in here as well. You can find that in that, um, description below 
Uh, but I basically have all my social media links here that you can go to, my Amazon storefront. I just did this uh, Kohler hydro rail system. So I think these checklists are gonna be a more of a normal thing. I think they're helpful. I'd love to get your feedback on what you think of them. But I, you know, this, this bathroom remodeling seven days or less thing, Man, I spent a long time putting this whole checklist together and putting all these different things in here, and I think it would be a great resource if you're if you're doing a full bathroom uh, remodel for sure. But uh, again, you can always check out my channel. Go to the playlist right now. I, I'm I'm working on this. I'm gonna be building this out for the next couple of days. I have a bunch of videos I don't even have outlined yet that I have out. Um, but this is all like a four by eight bathroom with a custom tiled shower and. Uh, so I'm gonna be basically putting everything into that area. So if you're doing a master bathroom, you know, you can really find a lot of great resources there as well. So, uh, yeah, Bondi Prime for self laver yes, you do want to do that. Uh, just... Yeah, I mean, Mike, yeah, I mean, you're definitely, any self leveler is most likely gonna have a primer that is associated with it and uh, you're gonna wanna prime that surface. There's not too many um, self levers that are not going to require that. And that primer, unfortunately, is a little bit of expensive and it takes a little bit of time to dry. So you have, you know, yeah. So yeah, you're definitely gonna wanna use that, that bonding, especially even on old concrete, anything. It's just the primer is gonna, um, you know, make that a better um, system on there. So, um, but yeah, so we're getting on almost two hours, wow. I didn't even know that was two hours. That's crazy. So hopefully I, I didn't uh, him and haw too much. Hopefully this was informative to you. Um, I have thin set in Portland cement that I think of smoking over the corner. Thinking of smoke. Yeah, there's, I mean, if that, if that existing thin set is completely bonded to your concrete floor, um, it probably isn't going to be any problems with that. I, I, uh, you know, but it's still probably not bad to, to grind that down as flat as you can so that you can make sure that um, you have an easy way of setting the towel over it. But no, there's, I mean, as long as it's well bonded, there's, there's not going to be, shouldn't be any issues for you, not an expert. So, so anyways, uh, thanks for everybody to join me. Um, leave a comment below. Give me a like if you could. And uh, hey, thanks again for all the new subscribers. I'm really looking forward to working with you guys. I don't know when I'm going to be doing a live next um, but I'm always, you know, this was kind of like a, a quick one that I kind of didn't put out notice, but, uh, you know, I'll probably be on a regular basis, but I am going to take a break here for a little bit because I've been really pushing out all this content on my YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's time to take a break from all the social media for a while. And, uh, but I, I'll be, uh, put out, I mean, I'm going to have videos coming out every day, hopefully during my little break here. And then, uh, we're going to get more serious into more live streams and you know again i'm i'm really thankful that uh things are moving in this direction so all right guys have a good afternoon and uh i'll see you in the next one